Something that's really been bothering me for a long time that I haven't really made a video on yet is the the, the quantum eraser experiment or the, the double slit with delayed choice quantum eraser I think is the official name of it. I didn't want to talk about it because with a subject like quantum physics, you know, I don't have a degree in it. You're going to get your standard trolls, even even in the conspiracy group, where it's just, oh, you're not a scientist. You're not, you're not a quantum physicist, so you can't speak on this because it's too complex. It's like the appeal to complexity fallacy, or appeal to authority also. But I'm just going to talk about it anyway, and then I'll tell you why... Like, there's, a, there's an answer to it that's just so, so simple that, that mainstream science can't accept because they had to get rid of the ether to explain uh, the Michelson-Morley experiment. But you can explain the delayed choice quantum eraser without any mysticism at all. You don't need uh, photons knowing they've been observed and somehow erasing time or and all the all the explanations that go with that and how how messed up light is and how the nature of reality is fragmented or whatever I'm sure you've heard conspiracy channels talk about that and even some of the ones I like they they're still trapped in this this photon particle mindset so, the way you explain it really simply is that just the light's just a wave traveling through the ether, and that the Earth is not moving. So let's just, let's just start with that. You shoot your laser, and it goes into a crystal, and the crystal, what they say, creates two entangled photons, but what it really does is just create two separate beams that are for all purposes the same. So you excite the, the electrons in the crystal, if we want to call it that, and they release energy. The energy they're saying is a photon. It's actually just the crystal vibrating the ether. So that wave goes out. So you've got two identical beams now. And then you take one beam and you just run it off directly into a detector and you get the, the non-interference pattern, what they're calling uh, a photon because there's no there's no interference pattern but the thing you have to realize is that it's a laser so it's it's a it's a coherent beam of light and there's no there's no slit that it's going through so it's just gonna be it's just gonna look like that anyways and you can just think about you know shining just shining a laser on the wall or something you don't see any interference pattern from just a laser. The way you get the interference pattern is by putting it through the double slit. But they put it in a beam splitter where half of it goes through and the other half of it is reflected off. So the half that's reflected off doesn't show an interference pattern, obviously, because it's just the same as shining a laser on a wall. And then the part that goes through is, is put out of phase. That's what the beam splitter does. It removes... See, they think... They think of uh, light as a polarized photon, but you can, you can think of it as just like a double wave. Because the ether, if you, if you watch a lot of Ken Wheeler's videos, he calls light is a, a coaxial circuit, meaning there's, there's two waves that are kind of piled on top of each other that are 90 degrees out of, out of phase with each other. So when it goes through the beam splitter, you remove one of the waves and you just have the one, uh, the one circuit of the coaxial circuit. And then on the other side, you shine the laser through another splitter and it takes out it does the same thing, but it puts it out of phase. And then what they do is they recombine them and they see an interference pattern. 
They see the interference pattern just because the two lasers are out of phase. That's it. There's no, you don't, you don't need a particle in there. Because you might as well just, it's just as simple as a yes or no question. Did you run it through a beam splitter? Yes. Okay. Then you're going to see an interference pattern. Did it reflect off the beam splitter? Then, okay. No, you won't see an interference pattern. It's, it's completely deterministic. This whole idea of it going back and modifying time and or it's or it's changing it's from a wave back to a particle, that's it's all ridiculous. It's it's just a misconception because there was no photon to begin with. So let's talk about why why did they need the photon to begin with? Why is why are so many people being fooled by this? And it ha it goes back to the Michelson Morley experiment. So what he had was just a simple laser interferometer. Interferometer meaning I'm going to measure the interference pattern on a laser that's been recombined, kind of like we're doing in this experiment, except we're not we're not splitting it off twice. We're just splitting it off once. So we'll shine the laser through the beam splitter. Half of it will split off. The other half will pass through. It'll go off a mirror, and then recombine with that other one and it'll be slightly out of phase. It's out of phase because the distance that it traveled, the one that passed through the beam splitter and reflected off the mirrors, that distance is greater than the one that just reflected off the mirror right to begin with. So that's why it's out of phase on the screen. So what Michelson wanted to do is he wanted to say, I should be able to detect the motion of the Earth around the Sun with this thing because if I align this in the direction that I'm going, like the Earth is traveling around the Sun, that distance is going to be shorter than if I put it orthogonal to that or in some other direction. So if I align my laser in my presupposed orbit direction, what should happen is the interference pattern should change, right? Because the one that's passing through the beam splitter is it's taking a slightly shorter distance than, than if I'm not traveling. Because I'm like catching up to the laser, right? So when he did this, what he found was it didn't matter what direction he orientated this thing. And even to this day, it still doesn't matter. Even, even now that we have better, more sensitive equipment, it still doesn't matter. The interference pattern will never change. It'll always be exactly the same, no matter where you orientate this, anywhere in the world, it's always going to be the same. So what that tells you is that the speed of light is the same in all directions. And that's, and that's where we had to depart. Not we, but that's where, that's where physics had to depart. They had to say, they either had to say, A, the Earth's not moving around the sun, and we all know why they can't do that. Right? You're not going to give up your, your model that you've been working on for the past 300, 400 years that you've built all this all this lore up around. You know, all your science fiction, all your uh, university positions where you're trying to figure out the cosmos, all of that has to go. Because they've basically just been looking at the stars and making a bullshit for 300 years. So we couldn't just say the Earth's not so what they had to do was they had to explain it some other way. They had to, the first thing they did was that they said, well, the, the arm of the apparatus that that's the laser is traveling through, it actually shortens in the direction of the Earth's travel. Like, are you, are you fucking kidding me? You think a physical object will shorten when you move it, basically. Like, but it, it just happens to be so small that nobody could ever t detect it. And it offsets uh, what the interferometer should have detected exactly. You know, the universe is just conspiring against these guys, hiding this motion around the sun. That's what they believed. That's what they had to believe. And eventually, they, they Einstein came up with a theory of relativity that kind of cemented this in where it's okay maybe maybe it's not 
shortening physically anymore. Maybe it's just uh, time is slowing down or speeding up. Or the space itself is shrinking or curving somehow to, to hide this, this change in velocity that's supposed to be there. And that's, they just ran with that. And just think about that. Instead of just acknowledging that the Earth didn't rotate around the Sun, and we're just going to figure something else out, they changed the properties of all matter, of all physics known at that time about light. They just got rid of it because they couldn't handle it. You know, they can't explain a laser going one meter and reflecting off a mirror and interfering with itself. But at the same time, they're going to explain to you that how, how time is being manipulated and how photons know when they're being uh, observed by like a human or, or even a machine. Somehow the photon knows that the machine is observing it. Like, that's, that's fucking insane. That's just pure madness. And that's, that's why they can't take the simple answer to the quantum eraser experience. I mean, even, even flat earth channels can't, can't wrap their minds around how simple this is. How do you think they're going to build a quantum computer off something that isn't 100% deterministic? How do you engineer that? Or something, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. How do you calculate all that? It's just ridiculous. You're not thinking it through. It's a simple yes or no. Did you use a beam splitter or not? If you use the beam splitter, then you're going to see uh, the interference pattern. If you didn't use the beam splitter, you won't see it. It's just a wave. There's no, there's no particle. We're, the only reason you need a particle is because you're assuming the Earth is revolving around the sun. That's the only fucking reason you need a particle. And then you got these fucking retards arguing about, you know, they put it in their name too. It's just embarrassing. It's like, oh, your name's your name's Quantum Eraser, and you're gonna argue about flat Earth. You don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. And there's there's another channel I really like watching. With, it's Quantum of Conscience. He has a lot of good stuff, and then he starts talking about how how time is being manipulated, and how. You know, the Mandela effect shit. It's like, dude, there's no fucking photon. That's how we, that's how you know that the Earth is moving. Is they had to invent invisible particles that have magical properties where they change, they change state when you look at them. Like it's a fucking, like it's a fucking leprechaun or something. <laughs> you, have, you look at it just the right way and you can see it. And then they take it even further. They now they have LIGO, which is just the giant version of a Michelson interferometer. And you can watch videos of them explaining to you what it is. You can read what I'm saying. That's what it is. It's a Michelson interferometer, and they they have it so it goes out like two kilometers or something. I can't remember what it is, but they're saying that interferometer can detect gravity waves from galaxies or exploding stars that are light years away. That's how sensitive it is. It's so sensitive it can detect that, but it can't detect the rotation of the Earth around the sun. And that's and that's not even the fastest speed the Earth is moving. Like, cause the whole sun is supposed to be going around the, the Milky Way galaxy even faster. And the Milky Way galaxy is supposed to be going around some center cluster of galaxies even faster. And this whole thing is flying away from the Big Bang. You can't detect any of that motion with your interferometer. None of it. None of it. But you're detecting a gravity wave from light years away that happened millions of years ago with particles that change state when you look at them. Like, what, what do you think the answer is to this? Why, why are people in the truth movement falling for this? They can't do 
the things that they claim that they can do. You know? If they had a quantum computer, you'd be able to look at it. You'd be able to look at it. Somebody somewhere would have one that you could go look at. And it would do something that's impossible for a regular computer to do. You know, you could you could have your standard supercomputer and your quantum computer and you give them both the same problem. You know, you have your your guys write the program for both computers and you can just prove it. See, look, it can it, my supercomputer will never be able to do this, but here I can give the same problem to this quantum computer programmed by the same fucking guys and it can actually complete the problem and here's the answer. Try finding that. You won't find it. It's because it doesn't exist. There is no fucking quantum computer. There's no photons. There's no entangled photons flying around that can read each other's mind and know when somebody's watching it and be in superposition two different states at the same time. It doesn't exist. So take it out of your fucking name. You're just feeding into this scientism religion. That's all you're doing. And all you needed the whole time was the same thing that we had for hundreds of years. It's just the ether and lights a wave. But then you can't tell really cool stories with that now, can you? Then you get to tell everyone that you live on a stationary earth and nobody's going fucking anywhere. There's no time travel Rick and Morty fucking shooting up a portal and people going through it into some other world. You have to be the responsible adult and sit the child down and say, no, none of that's real. None of that's going to happen. We're just, we're in this place. We're inside this container. And that's, there's no, there's no way for you to get out. At least not in, you know, three-dimensional form. There's just nothing else. You just, you do your time here. And when you die, you move on to your, to your afterlife. That's it. All this shit was all figured out. It's like, it's a finite closed system. That's why you have your, your megalithic stone structures that are pretty clearly built by the same civilization all over the world. Nobody knows how they got there. Nobody knows how they did it, who built it, but they're still standing there. It's just everything's been figured out. The earth was already a one world civilization before. They reached their pinnacle, the truth was revealed to them, and they just lost control. They lost control of that narrative. People figured out that there's nothing, there's nothing to strive for in this place. What you should be striving for is what comes after. And how do you, how do you control a population like that? I mean, you basically, you're just going back to religion, right? And you just have, and you have religions with their theories, you know, backed by who knows what, fighting each other for all eternity. And that's why they're lying about it. That's why the NASA and, you know, all the countries around the world, they'll all, they'll all cooperate on this and they'll all pretend to have these quantum computers and quantum teleportation. I mean, I save all the, all the ridiculous articles I find. You should, I mean, I'll just put them on. I mean, they speak for themselves. They don't have any of these powers. They haven't usurped the power of God. They can't. All they have are stories and fake videos of shit. God set the earth and its foundation, and it shall not be moved. <laughs>